Live from the San Jose Convention Center, extracting the signal from the noise, it's theCUBE, covering Hadoop Summit 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsor, Hortonworks, and by EMC, Pivotal, IBM, Pentaho, Teradata, SyncSort, and by Attunity. Now your hosts, John Furrier and George Gilbert. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live at Hadoop Summit 2015. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with our new big data analyst, George Gilbert with Wikibon.com. We have two guests here, Justin Borgman, VP and GM of Teradata, formerly of Hadapt, which was acquired by Teradata, CUBE alum, been on many times. Good to see you. And we have Jay Tang, lead interactive analytics of infrastructure at Facebook. And we all know Facebook, we all use it. Well, Half the world pretty much does at this point. Welcome, welcome to the cube, guys. Glad Thank to you. be here. Um, so Teradata and Facebook. I mean, I just don't put that together. So tell <laughs> us what's. I mean, Facebook. I think DevOps, eating glass, spitting out nails, write their own code, building their own MySQL clusters. Like, yep. what's going on? So this now. I mean, for Facebook's growing up. I mean, Mark Zuckerberg changed the slogan from "Move fast, break stuff" to "Move fast and make it reliable." So right. we know Facebook's evolved to you know, <laughs> reliability. So tell us the story. Sure, so I mean, really this came about as we were thinking about uh, you know, post-acquisition of, of Hadapt, uh, how to have the biggest impact on, on the ecosystem, on the landscape, to really deliver value for customers that are looking to run SQL queries in Hadoop and, and so forth. And uh, in that, that sort of, uh, um, I guess, survey of the landscape, uh, you know, we took a really close look at, at Presto and we're really impressed. I mean, it has, first of all, a very clean, modern code base. So, uh, you know, to your point, the, the culture's probably changed over time. And, uh, and it's incredibly yeah. well-written. And that allows us to feel like we can actually have an impact there as we uh, contribute to that, that project. Um, but also, it's extremely fast, which is really important for people today to do interactive SQL analytics. Um, and, and finally, it's, it allows you to query other data sources as well. So it's actually more than SQL on Hadoop. Yeah. Uh, it allows you to query Cassandra, MySQL, Postgres, and, and other connectors are being written just about every day. I mean, it's like smart data, right? Yeah. I mean, it's like data that's interactive with other data sources, not siloed. Exactly. That's what you're getting at, right? Exactly. So we saw this as a really exciting opportunity for Teradata to really um, put its weight behind this project and become a, a stronger member of the open source community. Um, and uh, you know we're excited to, to do this with them. I mean, open source for the big companies is not just a marketing thing anymore. I mean, it's so legitimized. I mean, first of all, it's been for, for many decades, but now more than ever, you see Red Hat as a tier one yep. player. I mean, they were rogue. Those guys were like tier two. They get into the enterprise now, they got 10 years support. Open source is standard. So we see EMC doing some big moves and actually doing so open source, not just mailing it in. Yeah. So that's really, congratulations on Teradata and that. So Thank Facebook, you. you guys are all open source, and you guys contributed a hell of, hell of a lot to open source. Absolutely, What's I mean, take? Facebook has a very strong engineering culture focus here on open source, and that we share a lot of stuff. So when we start a project on Presto a couple of years ago, we know from the beginning that we would like to open source it and then build a very strong community and get external contributors to work with the team at Facebook to make Presto the project better. Talk about the project. What's going on in the project? You said the code's great. For the folks that might not know the project, explain quickly the project and how they get involved, what's it do, what's the value proposition, what's the community like? Okay. So, we start to build a community around Presto when we open sourced it, and today you have you know companies like Netflix and Airbnb, Dropbox, these classic Silicon Valley companies adopt Presto, right? And you also have companies that are running more traditional enterprises running Presto on top of Amazon Web Services. What is Presto? Presto. For the folks that might not know what it is. Sure, it is an open source the distributed SQL engine allow you to query data at a massive scale. We have able to successfully route Presto to thousands of users to be able to use the Presto as a tool to query data that sits in Hadoop today. Yeah, yeah. I mean you open source a big nugget of value. You, know, you guys also involved in open compute, which we do here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Facebook's very much cool on open source. Um, you guys got a great great to track record. What, what does that mean now for the folks out in the industry? Because now mm -hmm. bringing it to the enterprise is what now you start, the rubber hits the road. Yep. What's that all about? Yeah, well that's where we hope we can come in and contribute. And you know, a lot of the gaps that remain in the roadmap are areas where we have strength. So for example, expanding SQL coverage or improving you know, performance, um, adding enterprise features like security and installer, 
um, uh, ODBC drivers so you can connect BI tools. I mean, these are things that Teradata has been doing for, for decades and also that we have a lot of experience with uh, when we were at Hadapt. So we're really trying to fill in those gaps, make it enterprise accessible so it's not just the uh, Silicon Valley elite taking advantage of this technology, but also... But like doing like Yarn integration might be important for somebody, right? Exactly. So what, is that already done or you guys got that on the roadmap? Or? So yeah, so we have a three-phase roadmap. Phase one, which is actually available uh, already and you can find it on Teradata.com slash Presto is really about an installer uh, and some basic uh, management and monitoring tools. So you can uh, operate this cluster uh, and experience it firsthand, as well as a bunch of documentation, again, uh, to make it easier to use. Uh, phase two, which is actually at the end of this year, will include Yarn integration, so you can now run Presto on a Hadoop cluster that perhaps is being used for multiple activities, um, as well as um, uh, integration with existing um, management and monitoring tools. So things like Embari, for example, or Cloudera Manager, where you're already managing your cluster, you want to see Presto on there as well. And then phase three, which will be next year, is really about adding ODBC drivers, security, uh, making it more usable via uh, BI tools, which we think is really the holy grail. Why did you guys announce this? I mean, obviously, you at Hadapt, you've seen the sequel on Hadoop, you guys know that. Yep. You know, Teradata is a big company. You guys saw this as a great opportunity to one, donate software, build a community around it. Where was the end shot in terms of the use case? Is it just, is it to take the goodness of the engine and retrofit it or just figure it out with the community? Or, I mean, is there a plan behind it? Was there like a purpose yeah. behind it? Yeah, there is. So, so Teradata has this view of the unified data architecture, uh, which we talk a lot about, which is this idea of, you know, Teradata, Aster, Hadoop, uh, uh, abstracted even further, it's this idea that you're going to have multiple different data platforms within your enterprise. And for us, Hadoop is an increasingly important part of that, that view. And so, you know, what we're doing here is we really want to have the, the biggest impact we can, and we think that open source is really playing a major role, particularly in that Hadoop part of that UDA. Yeah. And, and that's the reasoning behind wanting to get behind this. Jay, I got to ask Facebook, you guys obviously do a lot of great stuff. What's, what are you most excited about, about Presto, and what you guys have seen it do from an interactive standpoint? What's the key, you know, hot feature? VR capability. Sure, um, Presto we built at the very beginning as an engine to allow you to be able to interact with analytics against you know, the massive data set you sit on your Hadoop warehouse, right? Scale to petabytes of data. But and how did you do that beyond what you know all the other MPP SQL engines were trying to do? So obviously there's a lot of secret sauce and that we openly share with the world. There's a number of implemented technologies and so techniques. So that's in the, in the product, the secret sauce is in the product. The secret sauce in the sure, product. Sure, you have to go through the code base. Well, <laughs> I don't expect Good you luck to with do that. that. You know, yeah, but, it's, but that code is, is open source. Yes. So, all right, so the secret sauce is in there, it's open. What does it mean now for all the other MPP SQL engines that are running on Hadoop? And there are many, you know, and that's sort of the core value prop for a lot of companies. Yeah. So. Uh, I would divide it first into maybe you know proprietary and, and open source, and I think on the proprietary side, the more traditional database systems, um, you know, a lot of those are very mature, and there's certainly workloads that you can't do on Presto that that you really need a database system. You know, we don't view this as you know Presto is going to replace Astro or, or the data warehousing appliance by any stretch of the imagination. If you need that kind of uh, interactivity, that kind of performance, or SQL maturity, that that coverage. Uh, or did you? Yeah. Are you compare? Did you say Aster or are you? Right, Aster, yeah. Teradata, or what have you, or any other database okay. system out there okay. for that matter. I think, purely within the context of Hadoop and some of these emerging, you know, uh, open source technologies, where the SQL engines as a whole are still less mature, far less mature than than these sort of tried and true uh, alternatives. Um, that's really where we're trying to, to make contributions here for kind of a, a different segment of the market. People that are thinking uh, you know, about building Hadoop-centric uh, infrastructures, that's where we want to be able to add value. So let's get back to the Facebook question um, on, on Presto. So describe how it evolved in Facebook and what you guys did with it. So we know that when we initially we built Hive, Hive also the open source project started from Facebook you know, many, a couple of years ago. And what we see is Hive is great as a job to do batch work. That means taking your raw data, refine this into something you can analyze. And um, with that set of data, it's a very, it takes a very long time for Hive to provide the data. The analytics info insights that one analyst would need to know. So we built Presto to solve the interactive analytics problem. 
press to give the answer back much, much quicker. That so allows you freed up the time to do something more useful, constructive for the organization. Did did the work that um, the Tez work, without you know naming any names, to make Hive more interactive? Did that did it work really for smaller data sets, or or did it not really make it fast enough, and that's why you had to rethink Presto from the ground up? Okay. Well, first of all, when we first started the project two years ago, Tez was not quite there yet. Okay. And you know, then you know, made the best product win the use cases at hand, and the different organizations evaluate their workload, their special need, and they adopt appropriate tool set to solve their problem. But beyond just compare press to end to test, right? Press has a very unique connector-oriented architecture that allows you to query data in place. And I believe you know this is a huge value proposition to a lot of enterprise you no longer need to do your classic data warehousing trick to ship your data from all your massive different data sources into a central location, normalize the schema and the query in a central warehouse. You are able to, one, point a press to query data that sits on a high warehouse in MySQL, Cassandra, or even Kafka. Two, press to give the query federation capability allow you to pull data from different sources. That's a key feature. Join them together yeah. in place. And why was that so difficult in the past that you can solve it and that you can solve it now? Okay. First of all, in a typical enterprise, you have to spend a huge amount of effort and resource to your classic data integration work. We all know that can take a long time and tremendous amount of effort. Yeah. And also, it reduces your time to insight. And typically, you have to wait until midnight, get your standard daily batch up started, pull your data from MySQL, from different sources, consolidate it, whether it's in the Hadoop cluster or a central data warehouse. So by definition, you're already 24 hours late to but, get your insight. But weren't, didn't others try to do federated query, you know, long before Presto, where they, you know, would say to all the database engines that had the data, you know, give me just what I need. Mm -hmm you know, and, and then I'll make sense out of it. But what you were describing sounded to me like we're going to, you know, pipe all the data in via ETL, um, which was, you know, one way of doing it. But the Presto way was talk to all the engines that have the data. Yeah, so there are some unique use cases where you demand real-time insights to what's going on. And Presto at least they give you the option to do such things. And that you have to really look at your you know, environment and your use case to see whether Presto is the right tool for you. And we believe the architecture of Presto give you that option to do these sort of things that are not possible yeah. via some other tools. So talk about, guys, where you see the project going. What are your hopes for this project? What do you share with the folks out there that are watching or watch this video? How to get involved? Um, yeah. how to, What's going on? What's the vibe of the, of the community? What do you, and what's your hopes for the project? Where do you see the outcome? I'll let Jay talk about yeah, yeah. how to get involved, but uh, certainly our hope for the project is to really make it the enterprise grade SQL solution uh, in the open source community for, for Hadoop and, and for these other data platforms as well. And um, you know we feel like we can get it there. We feel like we can fill in some of those gaps uh, uh, Facebook's working very hard on, on filling in gaps as well, and the, the project just continues to evolve and mature. And one of the things that I think also struck us was the fact that Presto is truly distribution agnostic. So, uh, you know, I think a lot of customers today have some confusion about each uh, distribution platform and, and which SQL engine to run with, with each one, and, and each of the distribution vendors has sort of gone down a particular path. Presto runs on any of these. So if you're an application developer building a SQL-based application, you can now you know, talk to one common interface and your code is portable. Yeah. I mean, For getting involved, the community. We, we put everything on GitHub and we also have a Presto user group. You can, can ask questions and interact with the Presto team. If you want to contribute to Presto, very simple, open a pull request, submit a patch, and yeah. then somebody from Presto team will work with you to refine your solution and get merged into the Presto truck. You know what I love about this is I love the fact that Facebook and these innovators in open source with l at large scale, they're big data companies, they're data full, as we say. Yeah. In, this, this, in, this, in this industry of Hortonworks, it's all like, I sell tools, and I sell, I sell picks and shovels, yes. but the companies aren't living the data problem. They're mm -hmm. not full of data. I mean, Facebook, I mean, so much data you guys process, yeah. whether it's my sponsored post campaign or figuring yeah. out how to do great user experience. So, 
that is now you're seeing enterprises become full of data. We're hearing the growth of data. So you guys are kind of like the pioneers of being full of data and dealing with it. So now you're open sourcing Presto. So you guys were at the pioneering the SQL and on Hadoop at Adapt. Yep. So you're combining that. Is that what this project's for, for, for companies that are full of data? And some companies don't, aren't, I don't have a data problem. I mean, I'm not, I have data problems in terms of management, but I'm not, there's no tsunami of data. Yeah. So can you, do you see a distinction between those kinds of companies? I think you just brought a great point that we dog food our own product at Facebook we do weekly releases almost, and uh, we every time we do release, we push to our high warehouses. So we eat our own dog food, that's a problem you'll see right away. So from a lot of community users, the press do. You push it into production. Yes. Yeah, it's not like you're pushing into a sandbox. No. Right. You guys are. We <laughs> go straight to production, so you rest assured that the, the code you are running with has already been tested, stressed at Facebook scale. I think that's a great point. Two is that we look at the problems that Facebook users face when they use Presto. And we align with the roadmap with this sort of problems. And you can show that we get immediate user feedback. Right? A typical enterprise, you have the product managers talk to a customer, have very much longer release yeah. cycles. No so one's jazzed, but sometimes the apps in the enterprise are quite boring. I mean, they're not like Facebook. It's like, oh my God, some of my pictures are gone, or the image has changed. You're always doing A-B testing too, Facebook does, yeah. so that's another data issue, right? So again, this yeah. is like the consumerization of IT is now digital transformation, so this is the, the enterprise future, that's what you guys, you're saying, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Justin, I wanted to ask about, <coughs> at the Hortonworks Analyst Day, they had a customer panel, and you know, there's the usual confusion, uh, maybe not confusion, but the help us understand the, the where the line blurs between the data warehouse, the traditional data warehouse, you know, and the MPP SQL engine that's, you know, a good deal cheaper. And one customer said, um, it's really, what's in the data warehouse is, doesn't really change. I know what I want that's in there. Yep. And what's in the data lake is always changing. Yep. Is that what we should, what customers should think about between Teradata and Aster and Presto? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a good way to think about it. Certainly the, the data lake has some flexibility to it. It can be used for discovery and, and you know, manipulation of data. Uh, and, you know, that higher value data that really has, um, you know, strict SLA requirements, that's where, you know, the Teradata data warehousing appliance can, you know, really deliver on SLAs that, that the open source community can't today. So I, I think that's a good way to think about it. Guys, we got to wrap. I want to get, you guys get the final word in. I want to, Kind of a unique final question. Justin, you're an entrepreneur, but now you're in the big company. Facebook, you're pioneering DevOps, da Dataful. Share a personal view of the uh, what the enterprises should be thinking about. As the mind share of the culture change, which is a big part of this new enterprise movement, is not just the technology, it's the mindset of people. Like you mentioned, you know, pushing code production, and it's like, whoa, we don't do that. So, so what's your advice to the enterprise market and enterprises in general around taking this kind of product to the next level? What Presto's all about, Hadoop and this ecosystem. How should they think, what's your advice? Uh, Justin, we'll start with you. My advice would be, um, you know, I think because these technologies are so new and things are changing so often, uh, it's hard to do this, but I think to the extent that you can, try to take a, a long-term view on what you think is actually going to stand the test of time. And um, and you know as it pertains to SQL and Hadoop, for example, that's one of the reasons we're trying to get involved. Uh, certainly Teradata has spent a lot of time in this general area of, of building SQL engines, and we really want to invest in, in Presto to make it the enterprise grade uh, engine for, for Hadoop. So I think um, you know as you think about these things, as you think about uh, what tools to pick, what uh, what you know, uh, systems to use for different jobs, you know, try to take a long-term view. Is this something that's going to stand the test of time uh, or is it just popular right now today? And I think, you know, we're really living in a very exciting time, you know, open source and big data. If you look at the history of Hadoop, open source is one of the key reasons why Hadoop is and its entire ecosystems are so successful and are getting, you see, widespread enterprise adoption. And I see going forward, as you start to look at things like the consumerization of the enterprise and how they're adopting new technology, I think you know, open source is going to be an indispensable consideration that you know, as you want to march forward, be able to deal with the massive data problems that every enterprise shop faces, right? 
be able to open and adopting you know, appropriate open source technology is going to be mission critical to your success. I think you know, with you know, the Presto sort of project coming from an internet company with a big enterprise shop like Teradata standing behind it, give you a unique blend of success factors for enterprise to adopt this sort of product. And we're very excited about it. That's awesome. Um, Jay Chang from Facebook, Justin Borgman from uh, Teradata, formerly Adapt on theCUBE. Great advice, you know, exciting time, open source and big data, what a, what a match. And again, the software is great and it's, and it's all open, all done in the open. We're out in the open. This is the Cube here, live in Silicon Valley. We'll be right back after this short break. Live.